here we are. This is Sex Love Psychedelics, and I'm your host, Dr. Kat. Bringing you psychosexual conversations that will leave you intellectually turned on and hungry for more. For anyone who's doing this practice for themselves and writing their own erotica, do you have any Mm -hmm. advice for their process? Totally. Um, I think so. I mean, I think a couple things. Definitely start with yourself, right? And your fantasy. Um, Keep it simple in the beginning. I mean, listen, it can be like in the old Egyptian, you know, the old Egyptians or the Roman empire, if you want it to (laughs) be said in like some (laughs) fantastical way, you know? Um, But just in itself, you know, you don't have to, especially if it's for yourself, write only what you want to see, right? Mm. Nothing that needs to happen or that you have, you know, the way sex uh, sex is portrayed normally, just really focus on the things that you would like to see. And if that's something completely strange, you write that, right? Let, yeah. I think that's another tip, like let your freak flag fly. I mean, uh-huh. make it as weird as possible if that's, you know, what you never feel like you can express um, and have fun yeah. turn yourself on. I mean, listen, I mean, if you need to, go and masturbate while you write, you know, that's fine. I mean, anything, if you get to that place, you're doing it right. I would say. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nailed it. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Do you have any ritual around when you write or like for me, I I like candles and I I put incense and, and some like sexy music in the background. Yeah. Do you, I love that you do that. I mean, listen, I write so much and I write everywhere. So for me, it's a little less, um, I mean, depending, you know, if I write evenings, I really like writing like night sessions sometimes. Yeah. Then it's a little bit more romantic, I guess, in that sense with a glass yeah. of wine or something. But I really write on the subway. I write on my note app. I have a notebook. Sometimes I go to a bar and write, um, you know, on the bar. Mm-hmm which I really like because I always call that seducing myself to write. Oh, Just to give my. yourself, you know, give yourself a space and a place. If that's candles, I like the bar. It's kind of fun. There's people around and kind of, and it's kind of naughty because nobody knows what I'm doing. You know, you write <laughs> about sex and there's other people around. It gives me kind of like that feeling. Um, <laughs> Turns the room on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you said, but um, you know, any, that's mainly what it is. And anything that comes to mind to write down immediately, I think, you know, and if it's something I would, I like fantasize about that I want to do to somebody or that happened to me, you know, just write down little things. And then when you sit down, collect them and put it together, I think that's what I do. Yeah. And it's, you know, what just came to my mind is even the word erotic um, um, is a fusion of creativity and imagination with sexuality and it's such a renewing energy, right? Like where mm, sex yeah. can be, you know, just the act of sex and that can get boring after a while, but here's like, you're fusing the creativity and um, story and uh, imagining different possibilities. I, yes, I love this. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start taking myself on dates like that and take myself to the bar and 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 write. Yeah, or to the park, you know, whatever is your thing, to the beach, yeah. I don't know what people do. <laughs> What do people do? <laughs> For me, it's airplane rides <laughs> and cafes. Exactly, exactly. I like it. Yeah, but I mean, it's in nature, whatever really, um, I think what makes you feel central is, is a good place to start, you know? I mean, I like silk, you know, whatever. It's very, oh. it's very cliche, but I like it on my skin, right? I like oil. These things, anything you can do for yourself. I like wine, um, but you don't have to drink it all. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think after two glasses of wine, the writing gets worse. Um, just as a little tip, it <laughs> it does. <laughs> one glass is okay. The second one, you're you're done for the night. Yeah. I think. And do my you experience. Have, do you have favorite uh, erotica artists or or authors? Like what what's inspired you? Yeah, God, there's there's quite a lot of people who write really cool stuff. I mean, if you, if you do like classic stuff, it would be like Anison, you know, um, 
the D Delta of Venus. Yeah. I think her diaries are still my favorites though. I Mine too. Better than her short stories actually. Mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, I mean, she wrote those short stories for money and I think they were done well, but, um, yeah, I like, I like her diaries better. They're more pure and more her, um, what a woman. And then I think, I mean, listen, I think there's quite a lot of women who did cool stuff, you know, later on. I mean, anything from like, um, you know, the story of, oh, yeah, it's fun to read and it's like kind of scandalous, but not, you know, because it's older. <laughs> um, I like this book written on your skin, which Ooh. is a little bit more current. Um, let me look though, because I forgot who the oh, author is. That one. Yeah, I also love Henry Miller. I've always loved oh, the way yeah. that he writes. And I mean, there's such a cross with um, Anais Nin and, and his work too. Um, he shows up in, in her uh, diary. <laughs> yes, he Many does. times. He definitely yeah. makes a strong appearance there. <laughs> yes, he's, I now can find her. Let me see what, I'll look it up later and I'll tell you. But um. Yeah, I mean, Henry Miller is wonderful, uh, especially because it's animalistic, right? And has like this mm -hmm. like aspect to it. I think there, um, I mean, Emmanuel is wonderful. You know, if you want to mm -hmm. read more into that direction, you can read so many crazy books really in that sense. Mm, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of other writers, I guess, but... <laughs> 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 that's why you wrote your own yeah, I get but, it no, yeah but no but Pablo Neruda is a yes. wonderful um poet actually which yeah. I will never get close to his work you know <laughs> it's just so beautiful and I don't know if you you could call some of it erotic right but also about love and hmm. relationships and just the sensuality of his writing is just so gorgeous oh, he's my top he's one of my top hands down yeah. That yes, pretty yeah. wild. This man's talents. <laughs> <laughs> really. Well, that was fun. Thanks for tuning in, lovers. And if you want to experience more ecstasy and sexual liberation, head over to sexlovepsychedelics.com and learn about how you can join me for any one of my online or live events. And while you're there, grab my free guide on sex and psychedelics. Remember, this podcast is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please contact your healthcare provider and local law before pursuing any of the products or psychedelics discussed. And one final note here, I make this show specifically for you. If you're loving the show, then be sure to leave me a review in iTunes or Spotify to let me know. Happy to be here and happy to serve. I'll see you next time on Sex Love Psychedelics. <laughs>